Hello and welcome. Today's date is the 26th of March, 2020. My name is Derek and I want to talk about uh, fantasy, uh, daily fantasy in particular. For I, I think I finally figured out how to win this game on a nice consistent level. I've only really been to one of these websites. That's DraftKings.com. That's the site in which I've done very well. But I'm just... With the search of professional daily fantasy sports players, just to see what comes up. Ten things daily fantasy players should never, ever do. Okay, maybe we'll see something interesting there. Going pro in daily fantasy interview with Dink Peace. Interesting username. The mathemat. Oh, I love math. Math behind going pro in DFS. I've been doing a lot of that myself, and it's fun. It's math is fun. The number one ranked daily fantasy sports player. That's what I wanted. I don't know if I want to become that or not. I'm, I technically, uh, I'm not, not up five figures, and there's a lot more people that are. But that's how one man made hundreds of thousands of dollars playing. And this is October 2015. Uh, just for something to do, I pulled up my previous uh, statistics. This is since uh, well, these since I got last back into it. We'll say in the last well since September. August, whatever, last year, September. And this represents the sport, how much I've risked, how much I've got back. So EL represents the European League. I won two $5 tickets and satellites, and I didn't cash either one. Golf, $42 I've spent, and I've gotten back twenty one seventy five. So far, so good, which is literal, because what they have is if, like, Ironmans for, for like, promotions. If I play 133 games in a season at least $1 per game, I get back what would technically work out to over $100 in, in rewards and, and, and paybacks. So my theory is, oh, if I only, if, as long as I get back at least what I have now, I technically can't lose. So it would be interesting to see how this is going to work out post when these seasons get back on. LOL stands for League of Legends, which is a very interesting one. League of Legends is video game. So that one's still going on. It's the only one, really, that is going, that is left which is really odd how that is the case. And one game I'm really confident I can destroy is baseball. So far, so good. 229, we'll say almost 230 in, over 500 back. Uh, that represents pretty much the preseason this year, and I've done very, very well, only for like four or five, six days until... Okay, season's done. Mixed martial arts. That was the situation with satellites again. I won a $15 ticket. That paid back $38.39. And then I played a $3 game for something to do. NASCAR, I won eight of those $10 tickets. Didn't do so well. They had NASCAR's race satellite ticket. Where, and what I do is I play small satellites to get into to try to win. And I don't know if I should be playing ones like this, but they are fun to play, though. And other games, NBA, this stands for Classic. So I've kind of lost there. A lot of people do lose in these games, but 215 in, 113 back. And a lot of different lineups. Ten cent, dollar, three dollar. I guess there was a couple twenty dollar games when I won a second ticket to a Christmas day with twenty dollar ticket. Plus a whole bunch of like three and five dollar days here. And the I G stands for in game, which means you play at like halftime. And I've had some theories to it. It obviously hasn't worked out twenty one in. NBA showdown, uh not doing as bad, I suppose, but I'm still down. And then NBA tiers, that's what the T stands for. National Football League, uh, Classic, I mean, 308, 121 down. That's that's not good. In-game, barely touched it. NFL Showdown, this is a formality. 953 in, 1383 back. I probably should redo that because the All-Star game, I figured, was damn profitable. And that's where the a lot of the good risk and reward comes in. I probably played uh, greater than $100, and I made back several hundreds in profit on it. It was just fantastic. Uh, NHL, that's the game I figure I can dominate. I'm surprised I've done very poorly in this NHL Classic, 973 and 632 back. I got a strategy for winning. I'm not giving up on it. I'm just trying to master it better. NHL Showdown, I can dominate. I got fourteen, almost 15,000 invested. I've got back almost 20,000 on that. So that, that's the game I like. As well as NBA, NH, uh, Major League Showdown as well. Oh, that's going to be fun. 
NHL Tears. I got a theory I could dominate that game as well, too. And I've been playing it near the last two, three, four, five days before. Boom, season's over. I've been investing more. A lot of it was in the same sort of like $9 stakes here. I play like 20, 30, 40 cents or whatever. Or I just put in like 80 cents just to try to get reward points and player uh, stats kind of deal. Because uh, you can get, there's ways of getting better re rake reward backs in the game. Uh, one way, of course, is getting player stats. But I have, I have a strategy on how to win this game, and I think I'm going to put it into a higher aggressive field when re things return. Soccer, only showdowns. I have, a th I have a theory on how to win this game, and uh, I, took, I took a big beat. Though I, just, I started to go aggressive, and the second I did, the Australian League shuts down. Although, not really. They have like 4 o'clock in the morning times I just don't want to participate in. Uh, tennis, I won a $15 satellite, didn't cash, and then $0.60 cents just to get a small amount of points. XFL Classic, not so good, and XFL Showdowns, not so good. And I, I haven't played them since, like, week three. I just gave up on it completely. After I thought I had a, I thought I had a good strategy to win, and I, I suppose I didn't. My net buy ins 18110 net returns 23 So with paybacks, I'm up over 5 And, I, and again, stuff like, I like to see what these things say, like the math behind going pro in Daily Fantasy. Well, you can play DFS because we love the game. I don't care who you are or how much or how little time you spend researching. Building lineups or managing your bankroll, you wouldn't be here if you didn't love DFS. There's nothing like building a team of your favorite players and sweating out the last few minutes of game to see if you can uh, squeak out a win all while making a little extra cash. But for players like myself, there's always that pipe dream of one day building your bankroll to the point that you'll be able to quit your job and play DFS for a living. I realize that there's virtually no chance it will ever happen for me, but I thought it would be a fun exercise to break down the math required to get to that point. I could tell, I could do that. That'd be a fun, I could easily go through a lot of that because risk reward management is always Job number one. For the sake of exercise, I'm going to assume that the average person would have a goal of making 50000 a year. Um, triple that, 150. Uh, without further ado, no, 150, minimum 150. No, no, 50 is not enough. Not even close. Not even close. Although 50 is fine. I mean, I'm just getting started myself. My, my plan this year was 150 for uh, 2020. I'm just, again, building that bankroll up to the point of baseball again. I mean, I, I mean, the big money for, like, stakes starts, well, would have started today, March the 26th, because that's when baseball season was supposed to start. So basically, from this point to, like, the end of the World Series, because baseball's huge, huge volume. Hockey playoffs is amazing on multiple levels, one being volume, which is what you're looking for to make this kind of number. Because it's all about putting up big stakes. But anyway, and to have big stakes, you need a big, big bankroll. Let's assume the average pro profitable grinder can maintain a daily steady 7%, 37%, 27, 27% return on investment. Why are you playing the head-to-head -head from, from showdowns, we'll say, not heads up and double up. See, that's why you're not winning. You're playing the wrong games. These games are losing games. These games would be the bread and butter of a grinder. No, it's not. No, I don't even... Uh, how, how many have I played of these head-to-head -head double up of the numbers? Zero. I can't say that. I can't say that. I think I just fooled around a couple of times. There's probably two or three dollars of that whole thing. It's head to head, head to head in hockey. But maybe one or two days. It was one day I did it. To average 240 per day with a 7% ROI, you would need uh, 3,400,000 3, each day. Again, 7% to me. No, that's too low. You got to work for 20, 30, 40%. It can and it is. I'm, I'm, uh, well, for mine and my ROI, that's 5,000 on 18. So that's, well, that's like 30% or something? Yeah, okay, so be it. The average, and again, that doesn't include the uh, paybacks because there's, oh man, it's, I don't know if it's, I, got, I don't know if I got $1,000 back in return rate backs. Maybe not quite, maybe definitely many, many hundreds. But anyway, that's the average $240 per day with a seven, yeah. So how long would it take and, well, conclusion, that's, there's really not much to this. Uh, this was the one that I was curious when I read the headline in here. 10 things daily fantasy players should never, ever do. Have your 
have your baby uh, sit on your money. Uh, anyway, where's the list here? One, don't ignore the news, especially with regard to injury. Um, knowing your injuries is always an important aspect. I mean, this is what I hate about this. I mean, it's not fun to have to, well, I guess I mean, it's part of the business. But in hockey, it's not as bad as basketball. But it's, and you think in hockey is pretty easy, but I mean, you got to, 20 minutes before the game starts, if it's a 7 o'clock game at 6, 40 p.m., if it's a 10 o'clock game at 9, 40 p.m., you're gonna st- the warm ups are gonna go on. The information you want to find out who's skating sometimes, especially when you're working with third and fourth line players. And in showdowns, you kind of are. It it's something I don't you have no choice but to understand uh, who's gonna be playing with who, line changes that are going on in baseball, the batting order, who's hitting and who's pitching. That's really about it. Like w- what type of special things does a pitcher have? Any special. Um, out of the normal situational things, he's only he's going to be limited to sixty pitches coming off injury, things like that. Of course, I mean that's just basic. Don't set your lineups too soon. I always set my lineups to start, and then I just look to fix them up later. Uh, a bit nice, nice snow game. That's a nice. I thought an interesting picture, but obviously, uh, first ever Blue Jay game had snow, but not that much. And when that game started, I was pretty much a baby. Don't ignore the outside data. Duh. Don't have tunnel vision. Now I got a uh, bail. St- 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 I've always. Find at least three sources of projections of trusted places. Uh, well, see, for me, I mean, I've been handicapping professional and even amateur sports at times as well since the 1990s. I have been a box score fan for quite some time. I remember the days when I worked in the factory all the time, where 12 hour shifts, and it worked out that you'd start off, you'd work two hours, half hour break, two hours, half hour break, two hours, half hour break, until the end of the day. And during those half hour, I had a lot of Toronto Sun newspapers that had a lot of box scores, so I got pretty good at understanding how they actually worked and then you play the video games within them and then you're a computer programmer and you play around with different things like that you get a good idea on how to use that as a metric into uh, how you base your lineups but don't ignore oh my goodness this is so important don't ignore public perception that's like almost one of the top things to do is knowing what the public is doing because at least in the showdowns I'm playing against all the public and I have to know what they're handed but with these games I can download showdown results I mean even at the start when it opens I can see who everyone is playing their captains their other lineups I can do different computer scripts which I do to get an idea what the public does and when I realize the public there's the big advantages because the public is or not doing a particular item that is so important Six, don't follow everyone's path like sheep. Be a contrarian. Well, I pretty much was just talking about that. Big time. Big time. I, I'm, I'm huge on that side. I am huge contrarian play. Don't fear randomness variance. I love variance to a degree. Don't fear randomness variance can be profitable. That's the thing about a computer programmer where I can think of, okay, if, if, if two teams were to play this game one million times, I think this one team can win 407,000 or so approximate times. And a computer, I can actually do stuff like that, and I can see... Now, I, I haven't been able to get to the type of programs that I want to be able to do, which is really reprogramming uh, the best damn simulations that I can of a game hundreds or thousands or how many times over that I can, and then feed data results from that point. But it, it being a poker player, again, someone who just goes through thousands and thousands and millions of hands, hundreds of thousands anyway, then I understand the law of large numbers. And when you realize, okay, I'm going to be in a year playing like, well, when baseball season comes, there's three, four, five games a day, hockey, one or two, one, two, 
and there's a lot of uh, a lot of situations. So I realized that if I play a particular strategy one way, that can either lose like almost everything or win big. But I do it 80 times a year or 40, 50 times a year. That's where variance and larger sample size numbers come into play. Sample size, a number, big, good word when you're talking about stuff like that. Let me just, what's this quote say? The more randomness there is, the more value there is in being a contrarian. It is counterintuitive to find value in randomness. It is not how you predict things as much as you leverage predictability. The more randomness, the better, the bigger the edge. Correct. Don't have the same strategy for all sports. Oh, I'm learning that on soccer big time. Um, but pretty much the same strategy for the same general idea for for soccer I'm using in hockey and base, same thing with hockey and baseball. It's pretty much the same. And generally speaking, it's almost the exact same. But, I mean, basketball is a totally different beast. Football is a totally different beast. But by baseball, hockey strategy is pretty much worth the exact same. Don't pick the wrong types of action. You play, play the games that are disadvantaged to you? Is that what you're trying to say? In addition to understanding the difference between daily fantasy sports, you have to understand the different types of games you'll be playing and how the strategies might alter your approach. There are many more ways than one to skin a cat. I've never skinned a cat before, nor do I ever want to. Please don't, thank you, thank you. Please don't skin cats. It is inhumane. And I'm a dog kind of fan too, but you know what? Cats are cool. But definitely play the right ways in right games in Daily Fantasy. There are, uh, these are the general different ways to play your money games. Large pool guarantee tournaments. Uh, correct. They offer the biggest payouts, the most randomness, and the most novice players. I do play those. 50-50 pools, no way, Jose. And heads up, no way. Uh, these ones are terrible. I mean, 3X, no. I uh, no, they, they're just not worth it. I mean, good luck getting a 30% ORI or better. Yeah, good luck. Multipliers. You could do like 2x. Now the 5x, 10x, those ones I'll do. I, and I do the quintuple is what they tell the fives. They don't come up too often in the games I play. Uh, satellites is another one to play. They're the ones that uh, are, are good to play. But basically, you want ones that have very high first place payouts, especially because my strategy works that it does very good at hitting the high end, top end, prior, like percentage payout fields. So it's going to hit the top 1%, 2%, top 5% more, way, way more often with the law of average states. So that's what I'm looking for games that do work within that. Uh, Bale says tournaments uh, play introduces the most randomness. You are competing against a lot of different lineups and varying degrees of quality of play. Um, he looks for high upside picks in tournament again and uh, statistics, uh, consistency and statistical certainty more in other smaller pool games. See my strategy. You don't even enough have never even have to have ever watched a baseball game or a hockey game in your life. You just have to know how to find the players who are playing and, for that matter, understand statistics a little bit. Recent streaks, uh, mathematics of combat, just, just the lineup mathematics. There's just so many different things that uh, are important as well. But for myself, this is something I feel as like was working, of course, with trading the markets as well that I can make a six-figure income for. And at 100, 150, 200, then, I mean, I think you can quit your... If you, if you can consistently know you can do that, then as long as nothing stops in sports, well, then, of course, it's happening. Then it's good to go. And it's been frustrating not being able to play right now. Uh, one final bit of note, that sports coming back, especially for basketball and hockey, and even baseball, for that matter, too, which guys are going to be in shape and which guys are going to be way out of shape? I wouldn't be surprised if there is a bunch of pools that way over or underperform their statistical mean coming out of this. I mean, there's going to be some guys that have the greatest workout centers. There's going to be, I mean, pitchers in baseball are able to throw simulated pitches in their backyards maybe and stuff like that. So I got to think some pitchers that are able to do that the best could come into the start of the May or June or 
whatever season when it starts and have that advantage. Now, knowing which guys are going to do that, I'd have no idea coming in. But I think with this whole in shape and, and in back, out of shape, getting back into shape matter and how they do that, it could become a very interesting situation to say the least. Um, I don't think there's anything else that I really need to read here. Thank you for tuning in. Have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.